been there since 1908. Since the 1980s, I've been interested in implementing various different languages. Uh, I work within the APL in Turkey for the as you can see. That's my email address, should you ever want to contact me. Okay, so I'm here to talk about uh, native file functions in Dialog APL, and in particular the ones that we're adding to Dialog 15, which is currently in beta, and should be released this quarter. Um, up to this point, we have got a number of uh, functions that allow you to interact with the native host file system. So you can create files on the host file system, you can tie and process existing files, you can read and write to them, um, you can do some things like check their size and change their size. Uh, XLX allows you to do some translations on the in and out. You can lock portions of the file and you can erase the files, which are a very simple set of utilities, but they're not really, I'm sorry, how much more you can rename them. Um, but there's a lot of things you can't do with that set of functions. Um, we can only manage uh, files, we can't manage directories. Um, you must tie a file before you can do anything with it, which means, for example, to delete a file, you have to have permission to read the file, which may not, you may not have. Um, it's generally a nuisance to have to, to delete a file to have to do various different steps like time as well. You can't ask the contents of the directory listing. You can't find anything out about the file properties except its size. Um, and then when you've got the file you are reading and writing in the bytes within it, not dealing in characters or in lines, etc. So your favourite uh, limitation there. <coughs> so what ends up happening is that people write things like this. They, uh, they shut out to the operating system, which is a slow process. This particular code, if you want something new, give that to an error, it's really difficult to deal with it. Uh, if you want to direct your listing, you might do that and then start processing the output, which is much fun. Um, so you might start using quite a name. So what we want to do is reduce the amount of code like that in your applications. It's difficult to do, it's non portable and uh, we develop that. So what we've added are some portable file functions. The new functions in 15, so that you can write code which should work across all platforms without shelling out to the operating system. The first thing they are. The second thing they are is functions which hopefully make your life easier and write simpler code. Um, those two things are somewhat separate, and I'm going to present them separately depending on how quickly I go. We may or may not finish. But um, if you saw me in the dialog conference last year, the first half, the additional file functions for platform independent code, I presented in their own form back then. Second half are the new since then, and so it's the new content. Things like case sensitive team or file systems, um, things like drive letter specifications which might appear in the file name, uh, what is a value of the file name, and after much uh, debate, we do not even insist on a common set of file separators. We initially wanted to insist that uh, you only use a forward slash as a directory separator. We thought that would be more portable, it would work everywhere. You would be better off and be forced to do that. Uh, and then we realised, in fact, that wasn't portable at all because you're going to receive names from the outside world. And if you're on Windows and you have backslashes, we would then insist that you work non portable code. So so we get up on that, it accepts native host file name, whatever it happens to be. So, these are the things we've added. Um, first one, it doesn't access the file system at all, in fact, but it's a useful utility. It takes a name, a file name, here I've got a directory, uh, a base name file, and an extension, which is .vst, and it simply splits it into its constituent parts. Makes it very easy to modify those parts. For example, if you wanted to 
to create a second file with a different extension, or you want to put in a directory of files with different um, it is understanding of the platform on which it is running. So on Windows, if you gave it that, it would realize that C colon was a directory specified on a platform such as Linux, that would not split on the C colon. Uh, it has an extension mode, which if you give it um, a left argument of one, it will normalize the name you give it and then split it according to the same rules. So it's fully qualified to that name that I've given. And you can see um, it has resolved all the silliness. So those two slashes, I think one is needed. That dot slash is redundant. Uh, there's directory X and you've got dot dot and that gets rid of X. So in fact, when the time is finished resolving all that, the directory name is much simplified. Uh, because that has made the directory absolute, you can do a little trick with that, taking the first part, giving it into the name, and that gives you the current working directory. Okay. Um, so let's create some directory. We've got a method for that. If you create, uh, if you give it a directory name, it will create it in the current working directory. Uh, if you try and do it a second time, it will object. Uh, because it will be there. But if, if all you want to do is ensure that directory was there, whether or not it was there before, you don't have to track the error. You can give it a left argument, one, and that says straight it's not there, if it's there, great, carry on. And you can delete a file without having to type. You can still do the unerased type file, but you can get a delete, delete. That works in a similar way to look at uh, in that if the file isn't there or get there, you look at uh, the result. Look at uh, gives a result which is whether or not it did, which is only useful if you give it a left line with one. Um, again, with with end you give a left line with one, and if, if the file isn't there already, you just carry it on with that. Again, it determines whether or not it did anything. But the result of the and the is sharp. So in this example, nothing has come out. Um, and you can do that in the directory as well, but only in the direction. Okay, so that goes on the end. The more complex ones are, well, any of this is very simple. It just tells us whether something exists or not. It tells you nothing about it whatsoever. It's a very quick and easy check whether the file is there and it's a bit more value for this and that. And in info, okay. what if there is an access problem? It says no. The question was, what if there's an access problem? If it can see the file, it doesn't have to be able to access the file itself, it has to be able to access all the inter intervening directories and get it. Uh, how does the directory function to see it? Yeah. If it can access the file, it says yes. Um, info is the one that gives you information about files. I'm, I'm showing you info with names uh, of right arguments, but unlike all the others, this one also works with time. So on the left are properties I'm interested in, and on the right is a, in this case, a directory that I am interested in. Now, naught asks for a name, and one asks for a type. I know that's a directory, but you wouldn't know that from the name alone. It comes back with this name, because I've asked for that, and it comes back with a type kind of bond between the direction. Uh, you may think, well, why is it given in the name? That's not very useful. Well, there's two reasons. I mean, first of all, that could have been a type, but so it comes back with the name of the file, but it's time. But secondly, you can use wildcards for this as well. Now, to use wildcards, you have to use a variant option, which is the code on the pod. And what happens now, notice, is that in the first example, you, you gave it a two-element left argument, and you got a two-element result. You still get a, a, a result which is the same shape as the left argument, but now each element within it is a vector of results for as many files as would match that pattern that you do. So you can see that on my machine, there, in the directory, there are four things that begin with B. Um, one, Pointing at the screen for people, 
the ones with the directories of two is are ready to file. So BAA, backlog, backup log, and both of our directories includes any XT is a file. So to continue with any further. If you ask it for something that doesn't exist, it will give you an error. However, if you ask for something um, that doesn't exist and you've specified wildcards, then zero is a perfect number of patches, and you get just an empty list in each of the elements of the result. So I've only shown you asking for two things, whether or not what the file name was, or whether it was what type it was, you can ask for its names, type. I only show you directories and the regular files, but there are other types of files that you can tell you about. It uh, can tell you its size, whether it's last modified, who owns the file, as either a SID on Windows and no user only on Linux, or as a name corresponding to it. Um, it can tell you whether or not the file is hidden or not. Um, and if it is a symbolic link, which more, do exist on Windows, but more common on Linux platforms, uh, it would normally tell you about the thing that the symbolic link points at. But with another variant of you can ask it about the symbolic link itself. And one of the things, probably the symbolic link, is the thing that it links to. So I was asked to do this um, presentation as a kind of a workshop. Um, but I, I chickened out and I'm going to just stay on the slides because it's a lot easier and I have to do a lot less typing. So, what I'm going to do uh, is kind of type up my computer and debug and write a function, but entirely within PowerPoint, which is mad for some So first of all, let's see what we're going to do with this. Um, let's write a function that tells me in human readable format uh, all the files in the directory that match a given pattern, which is quite similar to what I've already shown you that an info can do. But let's also go into subdirectories. Um, and our model for this is going to be the slash s. Uh, on this machine, which I'm not actually accessing this on the um, I have got that directory structure in the rig, there's a directory called BAA, and inside there there's a directory called demo one. And within that there's a file and two subdirectories, and within each subdirectory there's a single file. And if I ask it to find BAA star. Uh, so those are the files that I want my little program to find. Um, they could have obviously found a directory, there are no directories that match that pattern. And dir slash s, if you've got poor eyesight, now's the time to come to the front of the room. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll help a little bit, there is a bit bigger. Um, dir slash s, there we go, I've asked, the biggest highlight is, can everybody see that? It's quite small. Because I've asked it to show me all the files that begin at the map <coughs> BAA slash star in C slash BAA demo one, and it's come back with a directory that is found first match in BAA BWS, and it's come back with another directory, subdo one, which is found BAA, but so it's the things that I highlighted just now. So I want to write some code that does something very similar to that. With any flow of at the moment, if I ask it, for the same thing, I only get the first match that is not regressing into subdirections. It's also not in a particularly nice format, so I need to add some formatting, I need to add the recursion. If we actually look at DER again, you'll see that if I don't specify a pattern, I just give it a directory name, it just... That's interesting. Uh, it has pretended I have put slash star on that. It's showing me all the contents of the directories without, uh, not the directory itself, but the contents of the directory. So we need to <coughs> determine that if you give it a naked directory, but not a naked file, I want to say that implies that there's a slash star on there. And finally, uh, here you can see that I changed into a different directory and I've specified dir without any options and it still presented to me the directory that you think. So I don't want any program to do the same thing. So we'll fully qualify directory. So um, 
Hello, Jason, for the game girl. I spent my day writing C code. Here, I'm writing Trashman, called uh, Dirt, it's a, I don't know if I write over to the name. Um, and I'm going to build this trash fan up and I'm going to kind of debug it through these slides as we go. So in this example, when I call this name or have it, the same name I've been specifying for slash BA and one slash BA dot star. So the first thing that I'm going to do on here is, is find out whether this is a directory or not, and it is, I'm going to append slash star. So the, the, the use of quite an info there will um, it's, to, it's to say, is it type 1? That means it's a directory. If this name didn't exist at all, that would have given me an error, so I can put a check around. And now, having done that, I can split this name up into two parts. This, the bit of code I've shown you doesn't do anything in this case because it's not a directory. It's nothing at all. It's a while ago. So, in this case, uh, that name is split up into the directory, the base name, the extension. Uh, in this program, I am not interested in the difference between the base name and the extension and the treatment of holes. So I'll simply calculate them together and we'll forget about the internet. So now I've got the directory and the name, and I'll output the directory of the thing in the movie. You'll notice that I use the left button to want to put in a process for the code value for the married plans. And if that doesn't exist, it's quite an existing use on the fish. There's nothing else to do. Right, next thing to do. I'm oh, sorry, I said back in the directory doesn't exist. There's nothing to do because the name I didn't get or star doesn't exist either for the one. So um, having done that, um, I will ask for the various properties I'm interested in of the Directory and the name. And now I'm going to look at the wildcard, so I've got the, I use the wildcard, so I've got the variant of the menu. So I'm asking for its name, its type, its size, and the last modification timestamp. So I get back the name, and the actual type, size, and timestamp. There is no guarantee to the order in which you get the results, so I'm going to present an alphabetic piece, so I'm going to get some indices to go through the results. And I'm afraid to put four of these kind of way. And for each of the names that I've uh, got, I'm going to um, put out the timestamp, the size, and the name. So you'll see now that's the kind of format I've got. It isn't, still isn't very pretty, I can't just the format that. So let's take that bit of code. Everything on its own, and let's um, change that to some nice formatting. Uh, yes, that line is so long, that's why it's so tiny, but it is just a bunch of more formats. And it is doing things differently depending on whether the name that it's telling you about is a directory or a file, so you can see what's looking at the type in there as well. So now um, I've got a nice format of that, but that's as close as I can get it to the um, So that's 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 going to present everything that's in the directory I'm interested in. The only thing it hasn't done yet is recurse. And it um, doesn't recurse into things that match the wildcard, it recurses into all subdirectories. So let's scroll up and then for and continue. We'll get uh, the names of everything. I just I changed the name of star in that directory. And so that's given me those three things within the directory. The first is the file. So we're going to the directory, which we are interested in. Uh, yeah. So doing the same thing as before, we're going to go through the alphabetically and give us a directory. We'll, we'll just reverse and process that directory exactly like we did before. So um, on the first iteration through this, it will be a file. It won't do this on the second iteration. It will reverse without the content of so the one which is the second file, on the third iteration, it will recurse into cell two with no matches, so there will be no files. And that is very tiny, but that is the program that I've been through. In all APL. Good. Uh, what else could we have? We haven't necessarily finished with this 
uh, for generally those as nothing in the moment to rename or move a file or directory. You can rename a file using the existing functions, but then you can delete a file with the existing functions. So you probably ought to add that when this is in plan for a future release. We've also been asked if we can include entire directories contents and all. Again, it's something we are currently looking at, but it's not in 15. Um, um, there are some file properties that I've shown you there. There's other things that we could add. Perhaps when the file is created or access to something that people are asking us for. However, here we go. Um, it's something we're working on. Um, basically, because those things are not generally available on the So, much quicker than expected. So, I can go on to the second half. Uh, that was the thing that we've done with the capabilities that we didn't have before. We've added and get and end put, and this is since last year's conference, and these haven't been invented before, which enable you to get a quick and easy read and write text font. It greatly simplifies text in the output um, because it deals with filing codes. There are a number of different filing codes out there. And they're different on different platforms. For example, on Windows, you're most likely to find a file encoded as Windows 1252. Uh, on Unix, it's most likely to be encoded as UTF-8. Um, you find that there are different linings on different operating systems. Um, so what we want to do is enable you to read and write those files and not have to worry about things like encoding and lining just on the text that's in the file. So let, let me explain for anybody who doesn't know, and I encountered myself at once just not very long ago, what would be the implication of these filing periods? So there's two very different concepts. There's code points, which is the numeric value that you associate with a character in the file. So the euro symbol, for example, which I carefully chose because it's one of the most different, um, doesn't exist in ASCII at all. In Unicode, it's got code point 8364, and in a Windows 1252 file, it's got 178. So, depending on what format your file is in, um, you have, if you're writing that way, you're going to choose the, the appropriate number. And then, once you've got your code point, there are different ways of encoding them when they are based on 255. Um, and you can encode Unicode files in at least five different ways. There's UTF-8, which a Euro character comes up and says three bytes. Uh, UTF-16, little endian, two bytes, big endian, two bytes per spot. And then UTF-32 is four bytes, one way or the other. Uh, UTF-8 and UTF-16 are very elementary code links, so you don't know how long the characters are going to be when you write them. UTF-32 is much simpler because it's a fixed length in code, but your files are much, much bigger because every character really requires four bytes. Uh, UTF-16 is generally two bytes, but not all the characters in the So there are some two pairs of values that make four bytes. Oh, and then you've got high reading. So Windows typically uses character in the files. Unix typically uses the line feed. Mac OS 9, which is uh, definitely for Mac OS 9. If you might have some Mac OS 9 files, we tend to use just carriage return learnings. So again, we want to do with all this transparently. And Unicode has got five other characters, which also became on the So here we go. Here is a simple use of NGET. Uh, this is one of the files that we were looking at just now. Uh, it's got in it two logical lines. There are two line engines in this file. Um, and you can see that it has read in uh, a three byte a uh, three element array, which is later than the first element, that's the interesting bit. Um, and then the second and third elements tell you what encoding it produced that file had and what its line engines were. The if you're just reading the file, the interesting bit there is the first one. The others you will see become interesting if you want to write the file back out again using the same code as you've read it. Uh, this file had in it, according to that, character to the language that 
the data that's been read of a single line through the platform, normalized normalise it to the same on all the platforms. There is an alternative form. Um, well, you can use an additional right argument that you can say read each line into a separate element. So there's no bindings at all in that file, in that data. They're all inferred. Okay. And then there's a corresponding input. Um, write text to a file, it tells you how many bytes it's written and it has assumed a number of defaults. It has assumed UTF-8 and it has assumed um, the line ending type which is the appropriate type of the host operating system on which you're learning. So it has written uh, the five characters hello and the character to the line for making the seven easier. But if you want, you can specify the encoding um, and the line ending type. So here I'm writing the UTF-16 little end in the format without a byte or mark, and I always go byte or mark to the moment, um, and type um, just line three line endings. And you'll notice there are symmetry between three element results of end get and input. You can take the result of end input, you can change end mix of it, and you can write the file back again in a modified form. So, how, I told you about all those different uh, encodings that are out there. If you use that get, how does it know what that file contains and how to decode it? Well, there are three things, quite often what I just told you about and we'll elaborate on. Um, the user has the option of specifying what it is, and finally there's black magic. <laughs> White magic, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> so, what's the bike order month? For anybody who doesn't know, again, myself, not so very long ago, it is a character, a zero width, non breaking space, I think, encoded in the format of the file. So, because it's a known character, you can use from that what the correct encoding is. Um, it was originally done simply so that you could distinguish between the the big end and the little end from the UTF-16, or the big end and the little end from the UTF-62. So you knew it was one, it was like, you knew it was the UTF-16, you didn't know which sort of UTF-16. Um, if you have some characters, you can go here at code point F, E, F, F. <coughs> it's been abused somewhat because now it's used as a signature. Um, so UTF-8 is using quite more than once, but UTF-8 is does not exist in different Indian formats. So it has no need for a byte order mark, but it's used now as a signature. So if, a, if you ask uh, a get to read a file and it finds a byte order mark, it's, its job is very easy because it has to be told exactly what the format is. But if there is a one of those, it has to try other alternatives. So you can, if you wish, uh, here's a file that I wrote just now which I, I wrote in UTF-16 a little end in format and that took by, that took by the mark. Um, you know, I tell you it's really in the same format. Uh, it's, sorry, I'm writing it in. If I write that file, and I read it back in the same format, it reads it as you expect in the correct way. However, if I fly and tell it to read the big end in format, it's going to get done. <laughs> so, there's no bite order mark. I don't tell you what a bite order mark will be. You go into the hero space and look, it's just worked. It realized that the UTF 16 little end in the last part. It uses a number of different heuristics to determine the most likely encoding. Now, I thought I was going to be short of time and remove the next slide, and we plan to move back in now, but it tells you what's going on. Uh, it can be full, but you have to try very hard indeed to fill it up. I would challenge everybody to do so, actually, and quite just to see how you get on. It's, it uses a number of, of flow tricks to work out what the file is likely to be based on finding a legitimate encoding, because some 
statements are not possible in the internet. I can succeed at that to, to uh, determine whether or not the trial contains valid count codables. Because not every code has to be defined, and some of them shouldn't be trials, but sort of heads on, heads off, and things like that. Um, and uh, what's the thing next? Yeah, it's still can't decide. Uh, it starts looking for my endings. Famous, it does do a lot of the tapping difference between UTF 16 and then and then the frame of one find the most valid line in um, So we throw various things at it, we tend to get it right. But if you could file the bomb here, which is the preferred option, it won't go through any of this, it'll just be the bomb. So here's a summary of what I've done. Uh, we've put in additional functions to allow you to write platform independent code uh, without shutting out. We put in additional functions which allow you to do the right files in a much simpler way. Um, and well ahead of time, so great thanks for seeing right. But I just want to add one thing. If um, you were at the last VA meeting at the Albion and you saw Andy Shire, he presented some other things that were in 15, um, 15 zero, and one of them was a simple case solving function that simply found the case of text upper or lower case as you request. And apparently it's handled a bit enough about that. And everybody says that it's so useful you must have that in all releases because I can't use it for my code or all platforms. Uh, please, please, please come out with some 14.0 or 14.1. So it is now in 14.0 and 14.1 as well. So I'll have you obviously your updates to get the uh, it's not documented but it is there. And the other thing, uh, why 8199 uh, there's, there's going to be a blog entry about why, why any ID, but why 8199 in particular? Well, it looks a bit like me. And Sorry. Who decides? Sorry? Who decides? Whoever writes the whoever writes the two two one nine. Uh, looks a bit like ZIP, which is the Russian number. Um, there are others, you know, MM from the new manager, so MM is 2000 in Roman Eagle, so I need to know. There are others. Okay. <laughs> Good, that's me. I finished early. Uh, thank you very much. Richard? Yes. You mentioned we name that group. Yes. Any chance that this is going to make it into 15 0? Nothing else on the micro sensor team. Is there anything else? No, there's no copies. Um, copy is very easily done with the existing functions. So we didn't do anything with those. Whereas we did do end get and end put, which is a good way of copying text files because of the additional work of converting content. Well, but it's, you know, we, we're going to look at more, so we, we, we did we did the learning for the first three, the useful ones. The expression you gave us for current working directory, one called info, quote, quote, should I expect that to give me um, file directory separators corresponding to my um, actual file system? It always changes them to full assumptions because they're part of the that's, I suppose it's a bit of a hangover from when we originally put the system you could only do that part. But we prefer that slashes can sort of get into the system in a format that will work anywhere, which is why we transform. Uh, well, there we go. Uh, yeah, a couple of keys for version 16. Yes. Um, one is make givers the plural, uh, which recursively makes our entries down the chain, simply because that's there in my name on this migration, how do you want me a lot of them? Okay. Um, we'll like that. Uh, the other is a lot of streams, there are easy ways of doing it, but so quite an example of nuts, um, which just creates a, an empty file with the name. Yes, okay. So these, the taking of the two in turn, I'm not uh, arguing for or against either of them, the, the recursive directory listing we have to do is how to present the results. So this is not listening, this is creating. 
Uh, oh, sorry, you were, I thought what Muck did. Uh, oh, right, I did not uh, show that in the slides. Uh, if, if you, are you asking that if you ask for slash A, slash B, slash C, slash D, and none of those directions exist, it yeah. creates all of them? Yes, yes it can already do that. Oh, but it, it does require an, an option on the left to, to, to tell it to do yeah. that. But it, it doesn't quite yeah. happy with that. Good. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? Yes. Um, how do you know that the form isn't data? Um, we argued long and hard about whether we should always take the form. It could be data, as you suggest. And then we looked at the kind of text file that would do, which would sort it, and realized no real world text file is going to have the data that looks like a form. It's the most weird set of characters imaginable. The advantage of, of the order being on first, then user specification, and then heuristics is that you can specify a encoding to use if it finds no bug. If you gave precedence to the user specification, it would ignore the bug yeah. and, and always decode according to what you specified, which is almost certainly going to be the wrong thing if there was a bug. So it was an argument we had, but we decided that was the best one. Okay. I think if you're reading files that contain sequences that might be bonds, you probably want to be using one and read. You know, then you're reading binary file, not the text. This is only a, yeah, it's only a text file. There's no point in using binary files to get more corrupt. Um, uh, yes, we 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 are saying it's statistically virtually. It's never going to happen. You know, it's, it's like using checksums and things. You will never, unless unless you're writing a QA, you will never ever encounter the problem. Okay, I'm going to discuss. Any further questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you.